having the second of our national workshops and today we're going to be talking about transport investment in the realms of uncertainty. Hopefully it will give us some indications of how we can get some sort of insights into how some of these new technologies are beginning to influence uh, what's happening on the ground. To help broaden all of our minds as to what really is possible. There's so much happening in the transport world today, we need to understand and think about what's coming ahead in order to invest in our projects. Welcome to you all. Thank you very much for coming here today. The pace, the sheer pace of change, I think is absolutely extraordinary. But that means, for the point of view of anybody involved in any shape or form in public policy, we've got to be on it now. In my multiple years of consulting, this is probably the most interesting, the most pervasive, and the most transformational theme that I've been involved in. In scope are three distinct but complementary trends, the electric vehicle piece, the autonomy component, and the mobility as a service. When you start layering the three of them together, this is where the genuine transformation comes through. It, it is very easy to paint a utopian outcome of this in 2030 and beyond. Our view is that it is equally possible that a dystopian set of consequences could come to pass. How on earth will anyone make any money out of it? It's very difficult to make any money out of transport, a high-cost industry with a lot of money tied up in vehicles and infrastructure. And the mobility industries are massive capital investors, infrastructure, fleet, facilities, real stuff, and more of that will be needed, much more, as cities attempt larger scale agglomeration and as we have to clean up the environment. If we want Mobility 2030 to be secure so that our cities and their residents can depend on it, then its assets need to generate returns over realistic economic lives. When we invest shareholder money, or when the public sector invests taxpayer money in an asset, we're failing in our duty if we don't manage the risk of it being stranded. So we need to manage our businesses and our stakeholder relationships so that the commercial use of those assets is likely to be defensible. To me, regardless of what technologies predominate, Whatever configurations emerge, they'll only deliver for the city if each party delivers win-win relationships. You need to recognise that you can't reach your own objectives in the long term unless the whole system thrives. This is a quote from uh, somebody working in, in local uh, government who I have a lot of respect for. Things get murmured about, like automated cars and deliveries, home deliveries. How's that going to impact? I don't think we've got anywhere near the answers. It's hard enough predicting normal stuff, let alone how these other things are going to affect demand trends. These are not, not normal stuff. This is stuff which is going to be part of our everyday life and future. Transport's become smarter over a, a long period of time, um, but we haven't yet solved the problems of congestion and environmental management. So how do these systems change the governance of transport? Well, I think, first of all, it gives voice to users, and I think that's already been a hugely positive thing. There's a massive shift in who knows what about mobility. I think it's the phone companies and the app developers and Google who know this. The business models of existing providers uh, are going to change or are changing. Managing the allocation of road space is going to be particularly important if we want efficient outcomes. I don't see many local authorities as well prepared for this as they need to be. This whole discussion has been built about uncertainty. What do you think we should be doing now? What are the synergies politically and in policy outcomes that take the best of what this new stuff can do and feed the good bits of what I have now? None of this solves the capacity challenge and indeed a lot of it might actually make it worse. How can we plan for the future of travel in a city under such significant uncertainty, even when you just talk about the impact that technology will have on whether we need to travel at all or we'll travel more because it will be cheaper. In general, my feeling is that this will lead to an increase in travel because these are all about reducing the kind of unit costs of, of transport. If it was more expensive for people, they're not, it's not a great business model. Is there an ITS view on whether more travel in society is a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, I don't think we've been able to agree with each other on, on, <laughs> <laughs> on anything for any number of uh, years. <laughs> what is definitely going through the roof is logistics and they are the same industry. By and large, through historical accident, we do not have the same people thinking about the public policy issues of mobility as we do about logistics, and that is a mistake. If you had a metro system, 
how would you build the business case to extend it? I guess it depends where the metro <laughs> system is, but I guess we're referring to your metro uh, system. What is it that you could redesign in terms of these new mobility options that would enable you to significantly broaden the catchment area for your services? How do we strike a balance between public health and autonomous vehicles, which could encourage people not to walk and cycle? I would say it's, you know, back to what kind of city you're designing for, how much space, quality space do you give over to cycling? Is it inevitable we end up in a sort of ubiquitous road pricing world? No. I think the least sensible way of doing this rationing is by sheer bloody mindedness and congestion. It just remains for me to thank Greg and Simon. That's been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I'm now, I'm now thinking about my business and what, what the real implications are, as distinct from the kind of hype. It gave a really balanced insight in, into what the real issues are and how we take transport forward in our cities uh, over the next sort of 20 to 30 years.